So I'm going to install a sine wave inverter, <coughs> excuse me, in the RV. Uh, why I want this basically is to be able to have AC power when I am uh, not uh, hooked up to uh, shore power. <coughs> so I got a Reynolds G 3000 watt sine wave inverter, which 3000 watts is a lot. I mean, the only thing you can't really run on that is the AC. Um, but, uh, my wife can blow dry her hair and curl and all that kind of stuff. We can use the microwave and et cetera, et cetera. So my plan is to basically, I think I'm going to mount the inverter here on this wall and I have a, uh, 300 amp resettable fuse here that I can use to, uh, that I can use to control on off. So I can totally disconnect it from the system. So I'll have the wires probably, hopefully I can still fit them through this grommet. They're, they're, they're uh, one gauge wires, so they're very big. And you want the run from basically the inverter to the batteries as short as possible with DC. AC, it doesn't matter, but DC, it definitely matters. So I'm going to mount it to this wall, I think, here. Um, fuse, fuse panel here comes up over in some fashion and then I'm gonna have the outlets uh, right here and my plan is is not to um, run um, anything internally in the RV I'm gonna have the inverter here and an extension cord and then basically a uh, plug coming out and then going into the 30 amp with a 30 amp adapter into the side of the RV now you might say well okay you can't do that well you can you just have to basically on your fuse panel inside the RV, turn the converter off uh, in your RV so it doesn't create a parasitic loop in your system. Um, basically what the converter does, it takes AC power, uh, converts it to DC to charge your batteries. Well, obviously you don't wanna be charging your batteries while using a inverter that uses battery power. I mean, it would just be, it's a cyclical parasitic loss. So, um, so you have to turn that off, but I think that's the easiest way. Um, to do it and then all you can utilize all the wiring in the RV and the only thing would be would be a cord uh, just a regular extension cord coming out and then going to where that uh, the 30 amp uh, receptacle is in the side of the RV that's the plan so whether that changes or not uh, you know uh, when you meet the enemy and you go to war sometimes things change but that's that's the plan that's this, this we're gonna see it come to fruition here so here's the Reynolds G 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And if you want to know what a sine wave inverter is, basically it makes the waveform compatible with sensitive electronics. Uh, if you're just running like a drill or something like that, you don't have to worry about being a sine wave inverter. But if you're running TVs, computers, anything with sensitive electronics, you have to run a sine wave inverter. And I would not have a modified sine wave inverter. I have a pure sine wave inverter where the... Uh, wave is uh fully pure uh so here's the wire we're going to be running it's a one aught uh battery cable it is super heavy i mean maybe you think this is excessive but uh that's the wire you should be running for any sort of distance for 3000 watts so i mean it's crazy thick i mean you can see it's like serious wire so we're going to um get a crimper basically a uh, terminal crimper, and uh, then we're going to heat shrink it so that it looks all pretty. So we have to prepare uh, the main power cables for the sine wave inverter. These are one aught cables. They're very, very big. They're as big as my, as big as my index finger, basically. Uh, so basically you have these little crimp ferrules. I would suggest using these kind. Um, measure back how far the crimp ferrule is going to um, go into the wire. Take a little knife, cut off the insulator. Um, then you put the uh, crimp ferrule on, and then you use a crimp tool like this. And basically, it uh, does a really nice crimp job. It just crimps it on. Forget soldering the bloody thing. Uh, then have some uh, heat shrink ready uh, already on your wire, and heat shrink it on, and that uh, does the battery ends for your cable. Uh, the other ends, uh, I would not terminate until you've run them up uh, to where you want them. Uh, but the first step is basically getting your, getting your wires ready to go. So there's the wire stripped off. Now you just put your uh, crimp on and crimp it.
And it's always nice to heat shrink things after. Uh, these heat shrink casings have glue on them as well, so even if the uh, crimp terminal does get loose or something, it'll still hold it on. Um, it's just it's just a great way to finish finish all your cables off. I would highly recommend doing it. And there we go. We've got two beautifully uh, crimp terminated one aught uh, battery cable uh, leads all ready to be attached to the battery. Um, there you go. So this is the DC end of the 3000 watt sine wave inverter. And it's, it, it's literally extremely simple to do. Um, you basically uh, pop the cap open, put your uh, negative terminal on negative, positive terminal positive, and um, that's it. Uh, there's a grounding wire here too, but uh, basically these sine wave inverters are internally bonded to ground, so this ground is really this ground. Um, I read a note in the instructions that they have to, they have, to have this on here, um, even though this is the same thing. It's bonded basically to this. So, uh, whatever this is grounded to, which is going to be the battery, um, is fine. I, I don't know why they, why they do that. I guess it's a, it's a, some sort of safety thing, but so that's the, that's the, uh, DC end of it. And obviously on the other end here is the AC end and all the AC end is, is three plugs. And then if you wanted to hook actual AC wire, uh, you got neutral ground and load. But uh, we're just going to run it off one of these uh, with a 200 or 300 amp um, uh, fuse. So basically to, con to find out what sort of uh, fuse you need for what you're doing, you take your watts, which is 3,000, times it by your voltage. <coughs> in, this case, in this case, it's 12 volts. So, um, and then that uh, divide that and then that gives you your amperage that this could pull. So this could actually pull if using 3000 watts, quite a bit of amperage. So I've underrated the fuse. So the fuse blows before there's any problems. This wire, I mean, God, this is heavy wire. Um, I don't know how many amps this could take. I mean, you could use this for welding wire. It is, it is actually welding wire, but uh, a whole crap ton of amps you could run through this, even at, even at this 10, 10 feet. Um, so this is all, this is all, you know, not overkill, but this is the way it should be done. Um, in case you ever do want to use this to pull the full 3000 Watts and you don't want your wire to be heating up in any case. Um, so yeah, anyway. So here's the two batteries on the, uh, RV and basically all we're going to do is we're going to hook a positive to the positive lead here. And cause we're using dual batteries, uh, we're getting still 12 volts, uh, not 24. And then we're going to hook the negative up to the negative. And um, then we have the uh, amperages of both of these batteries, um, but still at 12 volts. So um, that's the plan. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, routing the wires might be a little tricky because these are super heavy duty wires, but uh, we'll get to that. So that's the position where the wires go into um, the RV currently for the battery disconnect. Uh, I guess I plan to use that. I'll just strip off this foam, use that grommet, and then um, I don't know about, I don't think those wires I have are gonna be able to fit through this, through this grommet. Oh, well, oh wow, there's one over there. A totally open one. That's where I'm gonna go. So I'll, I will, uh, it increases the run of the wire though, but uh, I'll, try to, I'll try to fit them through there, if not, I'm gonna go the extra two feet, three feet. It's one gauge wire. I got one odd, so um, it should be it should be okay. An extra two feet. Um, so I'll go over there and then go right to the batteries which are sitting here. And I think, geez, I put a fuse under here. I don't know what is this? A little fuse panel? A bus bar? Bus bar? Okay. I guess it could go on a bus bar there too. I'll have to think about it. But anyways, I think going directly to the battery is the best way to go. We'll see. So what we've got underneath the trailer now is basically we've got the power wire going through the original grommet, uh, another hole for the negative. Um, what I did is I double um, heat shrinked it and then put a uh, strain relief stop on the other side. Plus if it ever does wear through, it's just grounded to ground, which uh, shouldn't be a problem. But the positive is isolated uh, through the stock grommet. Uh, basically just zip tied together and then it's going up through the stock um, hole. Uh, where the uh, 12 volt power switch is and that's where we'll take it inside to um, uh, finish the termination to the uh, sine wave inverter. 
So I've decided that is where the inverter is going to go. Um, basically, then it leaves the main pass-through uh, storage intact. And it. Uh, I can still use this side storage here. Let me turn that light off. Uh, and um, then the power cords are right here. On off is here. I'm going to have the remote going over to the door over there where it can be turned on and off. And then I just have to wire this heavy stuff up and over. Okay, it's like another two feet of wire, but uh, this wire is great for the, that distance. So that is the plan. So this is how the install ended up. Basically, uh, you just have your uh, stock disconnect switch here. You got your negative, your positive cables that I put in. It goes into the positive, goes into a 300 amp um, fuse then gets wired over, loomed over and the negative gets uh, taken to the back of the unit and then that leaves the uh, 120 AC here so I can do whatever I want with it um, <clears throat> and then this is a remote switch unfortunately they give you so much cable um, <clears throat> that it has to be wired like that and then it's just uh, screwed into the side of the uh, storage which has a pass through to the end to the entrance or to the inside so all you do is you open the door and you can turn it on and off from there. So it's super convenient. Anyways, I think it went pretty good. I'm gonna spark it up and uh, test it to see how it does. And so here's the completed install of the Renogy 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I think it came out uh, fantastic. We just tested it. Um, so you could either turn it off or on here at this, uh, this button here or at the switch you have access from the inside of the uh, unit so you just turn that on and there you go it's ready to go i tested it out on with some uh, ac tools works great turn it off here and then for safety you can just uh, throw the 300 amp switch to just disconnect it from the batteries anyways uh say technical uh mm, four out of ten not very high anyone can kind of do this but uh yeah I think it turned out great.